What's up there, YouTube? All right, good morning. I was uh, out cutting the grass. That's why I'm covered in sweat. This is sweat. In Florida, you have to cut the grass before like 9 o'clock in the morning. Otherwise, you'll pass out from heat exhaustion. <laughs> anyway, I got up this morning at like 6 o'clock this morning, had some coffee, and then went out at like 7.30 or so, 8 o'clock, and started cutting the grass. It's 8.42 now, so I cut the grass for about 45 minutes, 40 minutes. And uh, my battery, one of my batteries on my cobalt mower you know if you look at my videos you'll see that i have a co cobalt mower i did a review of the 80 volt and one of the batteries wasn't plugged all the way in the charger so i went to charge the battery and the other one was only had two bars so that's why it cut my lawn cutting early it only takes 30 minutes to charge them so i'm gonna charge them both up real quick and then finish cutting the back i cut all the front anyway what does that have to do with this nothing anyway as you can see from the title description it says things things they got wrong about the z6 and z7 and uh after doing some re some research about these cameras uh there's not a whole lot known but there is something known there's a guy's uh youtube page i'm gonna show it to you um you need to go to this guy's page it's his name is ricky talks i'm gonna leave a link in the description below but this guy works for nikon and he just uploaded 13 hours ago he uploaded a Nikon Z7 and Z6, high frames per second, shooting in stills. 5 frames per second uh, to 12 frames per second. So, the big discrepancy, the big thing was the um, Theoria, Theoria, whatever that guy is, the bald guy, the bald um, angry photographer guy. He walked into a the Nikon presentation thing about the Z6, 7, Z6. He picked up a Z7 and he put it in continuous high, started shooting and noticed that it was had blackout in the screen. He was like, oh my God, this camera has such terrible blackout. Oh, this thing. See, it's a piece of junk. It's a piece of junk. Well, see, that's what you get when you don't actually know how to use the camera, ask anybody anything, and people just don't know, and they're just handing the camera off. This guy, Ricky Talks, just proved him 100% wrong. In continuous high, normal, it gets 5.5 frames per second. The Z6 and Z7, 5.5 frames per second. And there's blackout. Mechanical shutter, there is blackout. But if you put it in continuous high extended, you get on the Z6 up to 12 frames per second. Raw. 12 frames per second. Raw. 12 bit. It's something like nine or ten frame, nine frames per second, raw, fourteen bit, with zero blackout. You hold the shutter down and it just goes. You can't even see the blackout. He takes the pictures and shows you. You can't see any blackout. Same thing on the Z7. Continuous high extended. You see no blackout. He holds down the shutter and it just as fast as it can go, seven frames per second or whatever that is on the on the thing. So it's an amazing camera. It has no blackout. It has blackout in the lower in the lower frames per second, but continuous high extended, no blackout, zero, zero blackout. I wouldn't say it was a lie. Maybe he just wasn't informed. So, get informed before you go trashing a camera. Get informed because you're you're just telling you're telling your users untruths that the camera has blackout in high frames per second shooting continuous, and that's not true. It has it in actually the lower frames for continuous. As soon as you flip it up to continuous high extended, zero blackout on both cameras. And it's amazing. You can't even see that it just moves. So it's perfect for tracking a subject. And you can't see. And it focuses. The only thing that gets locked isn't the focus, unlike the Canon EOS R that can't shoot continuous high without locking the focus this one actually will continue to focus it locks the exposure so i don't shoot with exposure um, automatic anyway i always shoot manual exposure anyway so i wouldn't care because i never change it to, i always shoot mine my cameras stay in m they don't go to aperture or program or any of the other it, my cameras go on m and stay on m that's what that's the way i shoot anyway he's got another one uh, Ricky Talks has another video called Face Tracking Test Update because he, he showed a video and battery life test. He shows where the battery was way better than the original reports. Only got 300 something shots. He gets like uh, 1,500 shots or so on one can on one battery or something like that. I forget what it was. He did that like two weeks ago, four days ago. 
Uh, a week ago, he did a, a video called Autofocus Test, Indoor Low Light Birds Face Detection. And people complained because his face detection was up against a white wall. And he said, oh, they were on there. Oh, that's not really, that doesn't really show it. You need to put it. So, so what he does was he, he goes back and he does one. He does one with a 105 millimeter 1.4 lens in a crowd of people. And it stayed on his face. And it looked perfect. It tracks when he's coming towards you, moving side to side. It tracks him perfectly. In fact, what happens is Nikon has a cool feature. It'll put a face box over your face. And if another person's face comes up in the, she in the scene, it'll put an arrow. Like, do you want to track that person's face? You can touch it and automatically switch from one face to the other face. And it'll stay on that face until you click the arrow to go back to the other face. Or stay on the face that you're on. It's awesome. That's an awesome feature. It doesn't just willy-nilly pick different faces or try to focus for all the faces or something like that when you're shooting shallow depth of field it can pick which face you want and you can select oh no i want to i want to now focus on that person that just got in the shot just touch the thing and it'll focus over on that person and it looks seamless it looks perfect the face tracking is amazing on this camera on both of them the z6 and z7 the face tracking is amazing so for all these people that got on here and trashed the cameras before even given a chance to actually test them or before the final firmware part of this is nikon's fault they should have waited until they had the a better firmware in the camera they should have announced and shown the cameras but not let anybody touch them until they had the final firmware and then waited to photo kina the photo kina show the cameras and let people compare this to the eos r which these cameras blow the crap out of the eos r i don't care what you say this is amazing full frame no crop in 4k Excellent face detection, tracking, no blackout in the thing, stays, lets you focus during continuous shooting. It automatically focuses during continuous shooting. It only locks exposure. This is an, the battery lasts a long time. This is an amazing camera. I, I don't, I don't understand. They should, it's Nikon's fault for doing this. But anyway, uh, another thing real quick, Tony and Chelsea Northrup have been getting an argument with another YouTuber this Indian guy that's a really nice guy. I like him. He's a really cool guy. He seems like a pretty level-headed guy, but he was talking about how they use a Lexar, cam Lexar card on the Canon. He's defending Canon and how they use the Lexar card and that wasn't fast enough write speed and all this kind of stuff. And that they don't, they don't, cry, they don't lose files as much and stuff like this. So they did a test and found out that Tony and Chelsea Northrup did a test and found out that, yeah, SD cards do fail. That's no doubt. They fail. They tend to failure. They will fail eventually. But what the, the interesting thing they found out was XQD cards hardly failed at all. They, they, they were way more reliable, but they blew that off as, well, the reason why we don't have as many is because not as many people shoot with XQD. Give it about five or ten years, and then we'll see how many XQD cards are failing. Really? Five or ten years, we'll probably won't even be using the same cameras. We'll have instant cloud backup as soon as you take the pictures and there'll be no cards in the cameras so for right now their xqd is way more robust than an sd card sd cards can fail xqd cards can fail but xqd cards are way more professional and they probably won't fail as often as an xq as a sd card that's just a known fact it's just much more robust much more better memory much better memory controllers these these sd cards you know in a way the um the other guy, that the Indian guy, was right that if you buy these cards, you pick up a Transcend card or something off of eBay or Amazon, you don't know if this is a fake card or a real card. You buy one from B&H or something like that, spend some money on a real good quality card, and it's going to cost you, you know, an extra 30 or 40, 50 bucks more than one that you get on Amazon. They're probably getting it directly from the manufacturer, and it's probably a legit better card. So the memory controller and stuff like that is a higher quality in those cards. And they'll they they're less prone to fail. So anyway, what are you guys thoughts? I gotta get back out there and finish cutting the grass. I just thought I'd come in all sweaty and get in here and talk to you this morning. Anyway, uh, there's a couple things also I wanted to bring up. I'm gonna start bringing back the term beatnik. Nobody says beatnik anymore, right? What happened to beatnik? Right? We had it went from beatnik to hippie. Now millennials, we need to bring back beatnik. Bunch of stinking beatniks. <laughs> you, you, you freaking beatniks. <laughs> Nobody says beatnik anymore. I'm going to belt you, you beatniks. <laughs> That's what my dad said, belt. 
I'm going to belt you. Boy, you should have seen him belt him. Boy, he belted him good. <laughs> that guy got belted. <laughs> you beatniks. I'm going to come over and belt you beatniks. <laughs>